Welcome to this video on dealing with criticism. Why is it important to deal with criticism? I think it's very important that we deal with criticism and mostly because we work in an environment that is, that revolves around criticism, critical feedback and critique. So it's the job of supervisors, reviewers and examiners to critique our writing. And being able to deal with feedback and reviewers' comments is important because you might get something really helpful that you can use to improve your writing. So one of the important things about writing to understand is, is how emotions affect our writing. And receiving criticism feeds into that. So receiving criticism often creates a, an emotional response in writers. These emotions are the enable or disable writers. So a positive response to writing will create positive emotions and then you'll be excited and want to continue writing. But negative responses often create negative emotions and this is where you want to go and do something else. So working in an environment of criticism and dealing with emotions often leads to procrastination. And when we procrastinate, we're often protecting ourselves from possible negative feedback. So we know from past experience what this feedback is going to feel like. So we put off writing to avoid getting that feedback. And, and just to give you an example, one type of procrastinator that's very common amongst graduate students is the perfectionist. And this is the writer who tries to produce absolutely perfect writing to avoid any negative feedback. So let's take a step back and look at the difference between criticism and feedback. So criticism involves judgment, disapproval, condemnation, etc. Feedback, on the other hand, is information which provides the basis for improvement. But too often what we receive is criticism. And really what we want is feedback. So what I'm arguing here is that we want to look at the criticism or feedback you get, take what you can use and, lose, and leave the rest. And I'm drawing on Eric Maisel's book, Toxic Criticism, um, for a, a large part of what I'm going to show you now. So Maisel argues that there are different types of criticism. External criticism, which comes from outside of ourselves. Self-criticism, which is the critical voice in our heads. Actual criticism, which is something somebody has said to us and anticipated criticism, which is something we think someone might say, and this is very common amongst graduate students as well. Fair, where we agree with the criticism, and unfair criticism, where we don't agree with it at all. What's really important, according to Maisel, is that it doesn't really matter what the form of criticism is, they are all potentially hurtful and can have devastating effects. So even if you agree with the criticism, that could undermine your sense of self. So all of these types of criticism contribute to our internal critical voice, which then becomes more and more dominant and overbearing. So why is it important to deal with criticism? If we don't deal with criticism, then we begin to avoid the things that we need to do. So we avoid writing. We avoid tasks. We, if we avoid tasks, we risk sidelining our goals. So then we won't achieve our, our writing goals. And that's because we fear being criticized. And then that criticism could hold something really useful that could help our, our writing. So what's really important is to not only understand how we are receiving criticism, but also how we react to criticism. 
Now there are many ways to react to criticism and I'm only going to draw on a few here from Maisel's book and we, we might draw we might react to these criticisms in multiple ways as well. So the one is we avoid the task in future so we don't want to write and we put off writing for as long as possible. The other way we react to criticism is to become angry and conf confrontational and to live with this constant simmer of anger where we blow up before we are even criticized. Or we might feel wounded and hide so we are embarrassed and ashamed and really undermine our sense of self. We might also self-sabotage where we do poor work, we leave it until the last minute, but then at least we can say, well, I didn't try so I didn't expect to do well. So it's a mechanism of protecting ourselves. We increase our self-criticism, this is very common, and berate ourselves so much that we can't even look in the mirror. Now that we've looked at the types of criticism and we've looked at how we react to criticism, what can we do when we are faced with really harsh criticism? So what Maisel argues is that we need to watch and notice how we react to criticism and then make conscious decisions about what we'll do with it. So these are the, are the decisions he suggests we make. The first one is an existential decision and this is like a life decision where we decide that it's important to acknowledge our emotions and that they're tied to writing and that criticism affects us. So we acknowledge that. The second one is a decision to appraise the criticism and only take what is useful. So we take the feedback and we leave the criticism. We leave the hurtful comments. We leave the things we can't do anything about. And the next one is an attitude of not letting criticism affect our mental state and moods. So if we're taking the feedback and we're leaving the rest, we're making a decision that we'll approach this in a way that won't hurt us. A cognitive decision is to control that internal critical voice, to stop beating yourself up and to treat yourself with respect. So if you agree with your assessor that your writing was sloppy or bad or whatever, you don't beat yourself up about it, you just make a, a decision to improve your writing. A personality decision where you respond to criticism in ways that don't weaken your sense of self, so you don't undermine yourself. And a decision about behavior to take action to deal with that criticism. So this, this attention to criticism is ongoing throughout the course of a degree or if you're in a career where you're publishing. Because the, with the critical discourse that we work in, we may find that that criticism affects us differently at different stages in our career or at different stages in the writing process. And it's not all negative. So for example, a student who produces a brilliant research proposal might find herself too anxious to continue because her expectations of herself and her perceptions of others have grown so much. So criticism throughout our careers is something we have to pay attention to. So the consequence of not dealing with criticism is this overwhelmingly increasing self-criticism. And it's so important for writing because it's that inner critic that stops us from writing. It's that inner critic that's constantly telling you, your writing is poor, this is wrong, you can't do that, people will think you're stupid. Um, so you don't want to get to a point where that voice is so loud that you become immobilized with your writing. So let's have a look at how we deal with procrastination, which is a result of this self-criticism. And this comes from work that I've done. So when we sit down to write, particularly academic work, it is so complex. It's cognitively complex. It's, it's academic labor. We are really doing so many things when we sit down to write one paragraph. And if it becomes overwhelming, then we immediately begin to feel bad 
not only about ourselves but about this task. And then we look for something else to do that will make us feel better and more in control. So for example, you know, if you're working on a literature review and you feel overwhelmed, then checking Facebook seems like so much more fun. Or doing more reading, going back to the library, that's a controllable task and we feel good about it. And our critical voice keeps quiet when we're working on that. So it's, it's much easier to do and we get these positive emotions. So this is how pro procrastination works is that we, we are involved in a task that is difficult and it becomes overwhelming. We begin to feel bad and out of control, so we go and do something that makes us feel better and more in control and makes us feel more satisfied. So many cognitive steps, they can be large or small, sometimes it's, it's a small step that causes us to feel bad and then when we feel those feelings, we then get up and go and do something else. The other consequence of academic writing is the, the, the gains we get are, are long term. So we don't feel good about our writing until maybe months later. But one of the most important things about understanding procrastination is that if you're aware that you are avoiding writing, you can do something about it. So here are some strategies to keep you writing. One is to schedule writing time. It's only by scheduling writing time that you'll be able to see if you're avoiding it. Because it can be quite insidious, you can be busy, um, but, but you won't realize that you're avoiding writing. Keep your critical voice quiet. That voice can come back later when you're editing, but when you are generating writing, that voice can cripple you and you want to keep it quiet. Set a timer for five to 10 minutes and write without editing. And, and if you get used to this, then write for 25 minutes, take a five minute walk, do something physically active, and then write for another 25 minutes. And that will often help you quiet your critical voice. Find a writing buddy, write side by side or phone each other after you've had your writing session, someone that you can be accountable to. Focus on starting so that you're not worried about the end product and then just move step by step through it. Focus on the story. What is the story I'm trying to tell here? And not on the audience or whoever's going to read it. These are just some of the strategies that you can use. So let's have a look at the key points of this video. So being able to deal with criticism is very important for writing and for surviving in this environment. Receiving criticism often creates an emotional response in writers and these emotions enable or disable writers. When we procrastinate with a writing task, we're often protecting ourselves because we know how hurtful that criticism can be. Eric Maisel in his book suggests that we need to watch and notice how we react to criticism and then make conscious decisions. And if you're aware that you're procrastinating or avoiding writing, then you can do something about it. And you can use any of the strategies that I've suggested. Thank you for watching this video on dealing with criticism.